Okay, here we go. Game two has begun, and as the panel was, you know, sort of say, this is an exciting draft we have from NIP. Vici Gaming giving us some standard stuff. To, well, sort of, sort of to an extent, you know, we're not just seeing a PA Magnus, we're seeing a Troll Magnus as well in the same lineup. These two cores ready to utilize that in power. Uh, but yeah, on NIP's side of things, ending with this Night Stalker axe, something a little different. It seemed pretty confident with the speed that they picked it. Is it any good, folks? So, the ones, the things that I would take out of it is the Night Stalker. I've seen them do this before when they're playing versus this, uh, like these initiators. Something like a Magnus who needs to blink in and get an RP off, right? Because the thing that you can do as a Night Stalker is not only get vision early on, but also you can stand on top of your core and you click that, you know, you click your silence, that that AOE fear yeah. that you have. They can't get and RP. And you just set up that that area, that crippling fear area. It's actually pretty large, that 375 radius. So you can guard people. So that's what I took from the Night Stalker pick. And then as the Axe pick, I think we've seen this for years, right? When you've seen heroes that are getting empowered, they have two of them. They have the troll and the PA. One of the better items to deal with that is the blade mail. And Axe is going to be able to build that blade mail. And we've seen people do that so many times in the past, right? Versus these empowers, you see Axe picked up just because he, if he gets a call with a blade mail on one of these empowered heroes, they're going to kill themselves on that Axe. And interesting to know as well, you know, we're sure we've seen the, the double stouts, of course, in the past, but we've got some double double stouts. Both Fada and Ace starting their lanes with double stout shield. Yeah. Pretty interesting, and we do see NIP claim themselves three bounties, so last game we saw how many bounties they were able to claim off of that start. And we saw this yesterday by uh, by OG. They did this Orb of Venom on the PA, and they ran a tri-lane with the PA, which made him s her that much stronger. And look at this, Paparazzi also is doing the same thing, getting an Orb of Venom. I know we've been seeing more Orb of Venoms picked up on some safe laners, but now seeing two teams do that back-to-back -back is definitely interesting. And we'll see how the lanes do settle. Of course, last game we, we did see both teams sort of react to one another and try and make sure that they did get the matchups that they wanted. Top lane, it's going to be the first bit of aggression from Vici Gaming. Fade able to chase down 33 here. Trying to deal with this axe, make sure the 33 is unable to sort of move into a position to, to start grabbing those creeps. He's got boots. They're going to chase him down here. They're just going to keep giving him the right Take click. quite a bit of time. I mean, those double stouts, you know, he's going to get a fair few procs of the damage block. They're going to be able to get him, though. Skewer's back up in three as well. Fade just going to continuously chase this out until he gets the kill. Oh, oh the Courier! Oh. The Courier! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 my God. <laughs> oh, poor old Courier there. Oh. He barely gets it out. But yeah, hey, Vici Gaming, first blood. Yeah, and this is actually, uh, now that I think about it, I was thinking about the OG game, and it actually is the same, too, because they have the Grimstroke with the Magnus and with the PA. Yeah. So we might actually see do, DY do the same thing we saw Jarex do and put the four points in the Inkswell early, just because of how, how high value it is. I won't they be have, surprised. They yeah. have good targets to just get on top of people, so definitely an option. So looking at the way that the, the lanes are starting, I mean, yeah, on top of, of course, we are going to see them sort of get behind that creep wave where they, they get the pull through. See if they can sort of disrupt it. Uh, but, but for instance, like Ace, are we going to see Ace on his Dusa have sort of a free farm start as he did on the Naga Zara? If they don't bring another hero down here, yes. Because right now it's just Yang, and Yang is actually just dead. Oh. Unless they bring down a second let's, hero. Let's, let's not go down this road again, Yang. <laughs> Last game he died, died quite a lot. And uh, game two, not the, not the start that he would have hoped to have come into. I think Ori, though, will pick up a little bit better in this okay. game, though. In this matchup, Fado's going to do okay for the first few, first few uh, creeps, but he's going to have to ferry a lot of region. As you see what Ori's doing, he's just right-clicking him with Fervor. And Fade's actually coming in with a haste. Here he's he got comes. the skewer. Back down into the mid, but there's the back. A PPD's in, magic missiles out. Uh-oh, Ori, he's just going to die. He's got a ferry of fire, but he's going to need a few more than one. Maybe he doesn't. He's got, oh, he's got the speed. He's got, oh, he's got the speed. He's got the south. He's good. He's cool. Ferry of five. He did work out. He'll walk out of it. Top lane, 33. Let's see if he gets some spins off. There's one, there's two. Has he got any more? He's got a third in him. He does have a stun as well. There's a fourth, but we'll still die. Vici Gaming. Look at the kill on a 33. The uh, sort of the axe shenanigans that 33 is trying to try on this top lane, they're not working. Vici Gaming shut him down. Yeah, that rotation too for mid. Ori had to spend the whole time running around to get back to the lane. Fada gets himself like four or five last hits in that lane. So he brings himself more regen, but also is able to bring out a belt of strength. So that base damage, he has 75 compared to the 66 of Troll Warlord. Now 78, because he got a level, of course, but... Fada doing a great job in this matchup here. So they have two lanes, farming incredibly well, but 33 is not having a great time. But at least they've got not. stacks going. I see sure. they do have a stack going for him already, and he's farming with the double stouch and a ring of protection at the start here, too. But I feel like, because of this start, right, yeah, he he can no, he can no longer do what 
they would have surely intended to do with the axe. Like, he wants to be cutting that wave up top, right, and dragging yeah. it down. He, he just cannot go for that play now that he's under-leveled and hasn't got the CS or, or experience because of these deaths. Yeah, it's just too scary. This Magnus with the boots and with that ink swell was just too much. And I mean, speaking of Magnus with boots, he's pretty much got Arcane boots finished up. He's looking to hunt for the mid lane. They have kill threat with Ori with the uh, double axes. Uh, using the trees to his best to get in prime position behind Fada, but ooh. Hesitates. He, yeah, doesn't get the actual angle for, for the skewer. It doesn't let it go, and that's going to be a free walk off for Fada. Saxa just picking up what he can from this top lane, whilst 33, of course, is just elsewhere in the jungle. I mean, if, he can get, if they can sort of get away with this, you know, having 33 utilizing the jungle and Saxa picking up some levels up top, if they get a fast six on the lion, they can certainly make things happen with it, but Saxa's got to be careful. You gotta get, you're going to get dove. They're going to pop Glyph they're, and they're, look for this kill because they know that the Axe is not going to be helping this. I believe they know a TP was canceled toward the mid lane too. And yeah, they found him, Saxa, in a whole world of trouble. They do have the TP coming in from PPD, but now PPD himself, he's got to be a little careful. They've got the Dagger Slow out onto him. He's by the Tier 2 tower, though, so Vici Gaming won't dive any further, and the TP will be coming in from 33 back towards this top lane. He's like, oh, creeps. <laughs> He'll soak up the creep wave underneath the tower. And Vici Gaming won't be able to do too much about that. So NIP at least able to get 33 back in a position to pick up some of those neutral lane creeps. Bounty runes. Who's going to get these? It looks like already Vici are looking in a good position to contest this one. Oh, they'll get the skill. Oh, he's on the cliff. And he did just TP up to the lane. Oh, I mean, he got the rune. Let's see if they can get any kills. They're looking at what Paparazzi. They'll get the slow out to Fada. Fada with this rotation from mid. will set up for attempt on a kill on the Magnus. And with the stun from Saxa, they'll get it. But 33, I mean, he's, he is, uh, what have we got? Yeah, he's stuck there until he's his stuck. TP's back off cooldown, right? Yeah, he is stuck for he's quite stuck. a while. He's stuck. He's not having a great start to this game, 33. He's having a bit of a poor one. Those two deaths up top and hitting the jungle and now hitting the cliffs. I like this move. I mean, it's, it's five minutes, so it's a natural rotation. But the Night Stalker, right, Fado, just making that move toward top, knowing he can put pressure on. And also, he doesn't want to just sit in the lane versus a Troll Warlord anymore at this point. He's done a great job already, but it'll, it'll always get harder and harder. Oh, what's, what's the cooldown on 33's TP? Just how long? How long? How long's he got? He's got that? ten seconds. Oh, it's ten more seconds. Not that. Not that bad. Ten more seconds but of solitude. He's level three, so he is yes. quite effectively shut down. A, <laughs> quite a significant amount in this game compared to the Doom, especially too. We see Yang. Sure, he died once, but level five, almost level six. <coughs> yeah, Yang able to easily stand the, his ground now in this bottom lane. Will be, of course. Sort of consistently out of mana with the constant snake spam from Ace. So hard to hard for him to really do anything in terms of slowing down Ace's farm. Because Ace just 42 for 18. Complete and utter free farm Medusa. Close on the net worth. Just less than a 1k difference between the teams. Three for two. And as we say, 33 is going to have to sort of pick up the slack somewhere. He's had a very slow start. Successful scan by Vici. The move from uh, NIP is spotted. DY will even put a ward down early just to make sure that they can see this dive happening. They see this huge creep wave. Well, not huge, but they see this, this push coming in from bottom with this uh, huge Medusa. They want to try to get some tower pressure on NIP, but Vici are prepared. And the Grimstruck, that's the deep pusher that we see sent to lanes. Uh, so this, for the, for the moment being, is just yep. sort of wasted time for Fada. Won't be able to find a move. Vici's just trying to be do some efficient plays right now, right? You send the Magnus in the mid lane, you send your troll to the jungle, make sure you can get your levels now. I think the most important thing for Vici is really get your levels on Fade. You get those empower levels up, and then your troll and your PA are both going to be enabled to be able to farm things that they previously could not. And accelerate faster than that, Dusa. This is going to be a very... This is going to be a farm Magnus. This is going to be a farm precision farm. I mean, Arcane Boots already. Sure, he's only level 3, but... And sort of in ter uh, you know, when it comes to farm across the board, I, I, this game could be a pretty farm heavy one from both sides, right? Like this this game doesn't feel like there's a team that's trying to end it in 25 minutes. No, I do think that NIP is a little bit more under the gun, though, right? You're playing versus Double Empower, Doom, Magnus. It's oh, for sure, yeah. very scary yeah. if you play versus Vici lineup in the later stages, because they even have the Double Dooms and the Six Daggers and all that that can come out in the later stages, too. Yeah, a lot of... Uh well, pretty much the entirety of the game is going to be on Ace's shoulders at that point. Yeah, I think like if they can get a good timing here for Ace, they do some ancient stacks for him. He gets like one or two items. That's when they look to just take a rush and try to end. Saxon does get hit by the slow but fade. Not able to really get there in time to to help out for a kill attempt. A bit of a passive night time here for these first three minutes. Fada not able to find too much. He's only he's level six. 
almost level 7, but he's kind of running around, unable to find actual kills. He's actually under a ward now, too. So they are spotting him, and he's just gonna he's just gonna start to just farm a bit here for himself. PPD, let's get silence and stun, but we'll be able to walk away. Interesting move there from PPD as well. He, he grabs that haste rune, and he just did a full sweep of uh, sort of the dire's half of the map. Hmm. So just getting some important intel on who was whereabouts in the jungle. Yeah, maybe checking for some stacks too, right? They're playing yeah. versus an, yeah. you know a team with empower. They have a do so they have great ways to be able to steal those stacks if they do get an opportunity as top. They're trying to go in on the PA, but level 7, Paparazzi is not the easiest of targets to just run down. Great so silence by DY. Not letting Sox get those disables off. Oh, here's Ace getting the farm on. Ancient stacks to be cleared. It's a big one, though. It's going to take him some time. He's actually not going to kill this very efficiently at all on Ace right now. No, he's just holding the, the three Wraith bands at the moment. Yeah, it's going to take, yeah, take him quite a while. Uh, it's going to leave space on that bottom lane for, for Yang to pick up the farm. Nobody's down there at the moment for NIP with Ace sitting in the jungle as such. Top lane, Vici Gaming will try for the poke. Silas is out on to PPD, but he already got the magic missile out. The call's there onto the two of them from 33. They'll kill off DY. Hex as well from Saxer on a Paparazzi. Paparazzi and Ori falling a little low, but Ori, he's able to battle up against 33, rip through the axe. See if he can catch on to any more. He's trying to chase them down, but still with the three of them, has to be careful. Saxer tries for a stun, but or he has the speed to keep the distance. As it's all about these runes once again. NIP trying their best to force VT Gaming away from taking any of these top two. Yang should be able to claim the bottom two as there's nobody else on that half of the map. And he will do so. So two for two, surely on the runes. I still yet to pick up the one on his side of the map, Yang. Ace is still trying to clear this Ancient out. It's... It's it's really difficult. He's not doing so well versus. It's taking him a long, long time. It I mean, was as you a say, you've very got this big stack. It was all of the buffs. It was every single one of the buffs that you can have on top of that ancient stack. So he's yeah, he's only level eight. So yeah. It was pretty tough for him. They kept I, hitting him too. Do you, I mean, do you think they? This is NRP saying that like, was there some sort of pressure to take it because they were worried that maybe it would get stolen with sort of empowered heroes? I think it's just he should use the space that they're making right now, right? They were running four heroes top. He has to do something with the space and farm one of the better options. But it gave Yang so much bottom, right? Yeah, Yang he's now, had a total free has, lane for the last couple of minutes. He pretty much has a full drum now on this Doom, and he's pressured. This, this tower is pretty much dead, too. He's got it. So that is, I mean, you know, NIP looked like they chose to make that one, but Vici seems to come out a bit ahead of that one as they will also get now level 6 on the Magnus too, and these Empowers are just going to start flying onto these cores over and over again. And with Yang doing as well as he has now with that space down bottom, he'll get the back of two more, just in case any reaction comes to this tower being taken. Won't do so, as NIP are just simply looking to trade elsewhere, pressure being put onto both the mid and the top. But that will be the first one going down on that bottom lane. Tower taken, Ori gets the last touch, more money for the troll. They know that they can, like Vici knows that they can make moves. It's Ooh, eight. And they do try and do so. Fade going in for the RP does still get it off, even after PPD's initial attempts to stop him. Ace, oh, he's surely going to fall. Paparazzi able to jump over. They get the kill onto Ace. So they can chase for more. Looking for PPD. He has not got the mana for another stun. Three heroes collapse upon him. Paparazzi gets the double. Starting to look a bit scary here for NIP as whenever it is daytime, because of how shut down 33 is in this game, they don't really have moves that they can make on them. They don't have an offliner. They don't have an offliner, and Fada can't play around these timings. He has to be playing either around Dark Ascension or around nighttime exclusively. And it really, yeah, Fada's farm, you look at this mid, he's he's nearly below the Magnus. Yeah. With the space that there was in that mid lane. And look at Ori, he's just looking to make the aggressive play. I mean, it's Night Stalker during the day. You do not fear. The Night Stalker. And there's the route. PPD will be here, so we'll be able to... Keep, well, he's not able to keep him safe. No, it does not have the and potential to get him out of there. It's a solo kill. That's Yeah, or he's just walking up and killing cores. And that means he's going to be able to enable himself to get that Diffusal earlier. And a Diffusal Troll Warlord in this game is so scary versus this, like most well, of their heroes. I mean, of course, the Dusa, but the rest of them also suck. That's a 12-minute Deso. 12-minute Deso with the Empowers. People going to die. Yep. I mean, it's faster smoking. than the fastest. I mean, yeah, the fastest, that was fast. This is faster. And look at Yang. He's just running around in circles looking for 33 here. There's no TPs to help just yet. We see Ace is walking toward. Now the TP from Fada's coming in. He's got his ult available. Yeah, 33 will be able to outlive the Doom's duration. Now they can turn, look towards Yang. Yang's got back up a DY and Paparazzi. There's the soul by now. Here come the daggers. Does he want to try and commit? Does that just be a little careful with that cloud around Fada still being there? Stun from Saxa's is out onto DY. Paparazzi, another dagger just being thrown, trying to slow them down from the chase. Or he's now coming with a backup. Paparazzi looks to commit towards Fada. Fada flaps his way across the trees and back to safety. He'll get out of there. 
Only DY goes down. Okay, they can get themselves the Grimstroke there at least. But that isn't, you know, that's a Dark Ascension committed and a finger to both get just that five position support. But the important thing is that they protect the Axe. They protect 33 from dying and they really need him to start ramping it up. He needs to get this Blink Dagger for them to make moves on the map because besides him having a Blink, they just oh. can't do anything and Vichy's already running into that Roche. I and mean, they know they can with the Death up with the Empire, they can do a lot of damage. They, they, oh, they are looking to be a little careful now that they know that NIP is waiting for them outside of the pit. They have got good tools to fight with. RP is available for Fade. If Vichy Gaming are able to get themselves in, into a position where he can skewer in for a big RP. Prioritizing this tower here. Yeah, just take a bit more map control around this pit before trying to commit once again. He's stepping forward. They don't have a Vlad's on their team just yet either, so doing that Roche, they don't stay at full HP, but I believe Doom should be... Yeah, Doom just queued one up, so they should be getting one pretty soon. They're actually looking to make a dive play with the Ink Swell. They can't get on top of Ace just yet. And what, what, what are we going to see Paparazzi go for after the Desert? Does he just go for the BKB or can he, can he go a bit aggressive? What's he got? I, you, I, it's just BKB. I think you can just BKB because you have... I mean, there's, there's, you might not even need it. There's nothing he's really... Well, there's about. quite a lot. There's, well, there's the line and the Venge in terms of lockdown and, of course, yeah. what the, the, the fear from the, the Night Stalker is pretty annoying. I have the, actually, yeah, the fear. Yeah. Never mind. You're right. Absolutely. I mean, the fear, you know, the hexes and the disables, yeah, they're obnoxious, but like sometimes it's just like you tank up and you get like SNY and you see people do that because the status is. Yeah. But the fear is, the fear is it's very just obnoxious. on you. It's yeah. yeah, very hard to play against. Now they've got the Vlad, so they can do this Roche and I've got the Vlad, I mean, full sustain. And Fade's got his blink. They got a blink Magnus ready to go. We said it was going to be a farm mag. Yeah. He got arcane boots at like the three minute mark or four minute mark. So he is loving life this game. Up top. Taxa, he's trying to play around with DY. DY's got Paparazzi coming in as well as Ori. Taxa's got to run, he's got to hide. The slow connects from DY. It doesn't connect from Ori, but that doesn't matter because Paparazzi's flying in with the daggers. And another kill's picked up for the PA. That's 8 for 4, 5k lead for Vici Gaming. There's 33's blink, but as we say, as the offlane, it was a slower blink than fades. On the side of Vici Gaming, he's just chilling as that 4. And they're. They're at this deficit already, and they're playing versus a Magnus PA troll, as we emphasized earlier. I mean, this lineup scales incredibly hard. They're actually going to be able to steal okay, some ancients get, here. Yeah, they'll steal the double stack. Okay. That's a little bit of money, a little bit of gold that 33 well and truly needs. A fade. Paparazzi on the hunt. PPD. We'll scout them out. Ooh, quick jump and a quick wow. crit. Paparazzi cuts Peter into pieces. They're continuing to hunt. They're looking for more, too. They actually are looking to try to go for this Medusa in the Ace? mid lane here. Uh, he doesn't really have any backup at all. The Stone Gaze will come out. He's still rooted. They're just going to chase him down. Ace, he's, uh, this is where he's, he's saying, team, team, there is no team. It, he's dead. Dive, don't pass the tier two tower. I mean, Fada did have a TP. He's probably, you know, I mean, I guess he could could have done nothing. I mean, he could have. Could he have done something? I don't think that they can actually help they, the Deuce. They just he let, might they actually just, just let die, him die. Too. Yeah, I think that they're just so much weaker than Vici at this point. They need the axe. They need 33, the one, to be able to make the plays. But right now, he wants to get the blade mail. Like, his blink, sure, he can get the disables, but the damage is still not going to be there so much. When he has the blade mail, it'll help a lot more, but he is not staying very healthy. Uh -oh. And now, oh, that ink swell on the creep is yeah. going to be enough. This cute little attempt to try and get the stun. They didn't even need it anyway, Fade. Comes in for the cleanup. But it's the damage. The ink swell damage tick oh, stopped 33's blink because he tried I... to blink away. That was a that was a little oh, you're right, cheeky yeah. play just, there by DY. Yeah, just that first little instance. Yeah. I don't think 33 expected that. He did not. When you have that the higher level points of ink swell, you know, that cast range, it's not 400 anymore. It goes all the way up to that 700. Oh, so PPD. From far. So scared going on there, but this time, you know, PPD, I mean, he, he better have friends. If PPD doesn't have friends coming in, he's going to be a very angry man. Yeah. And he does. They'll, they'll help PPD. I'll make sure that he doesn't die to, to Vichy Gaming's aggression. Oh man, this game is looking just pretty brutal. This is harder and harder. And yeah, I think I think I saw Paparazzi switch his item choice. He queued up Satanic. So I was thinking, like, you know, the BKB makes sense, but they're so far ahead. Like, you going these S and Ys, going these it? Satanics, if he gets these status resistances in this game versus these like these disables, they're just so powerful. I also saw the troll switch the build. I saw Ori went from defusal, he just said, nah, I'm just going S and Y satanic. Same thing, just status resistance and also ways that you can not ever worry about the blade mill on the axe. Because if he does get the blade yeah. mill and you have satanic, you're like, all right, well, whatever. That's a good point. Bang on. Tower's gone. Vici Gaming continuing to rule the map. As NIP, they'll lose that one top. They'll lose the one mid. They're probably going to lose this tower bottom as well. I don't see them coming out of the base to try and hold this one. They just as make moves. This is this is sort of feature gaming playing back at the pace and this is sort of how they would have
plan for game one to go. 18 minutes in, taking all tier two towers, looking towards, you know, maybe closing up the game within the next five minutes. This is Vici Gaming back on plan. Yeah, and it, this time it was NIP's plan just not not working. They just got, the axe could not cut the creep waves and that really just hurt them so much, right? Just 33 being so shut down in this game is really what's causing the problems. And in they so go. RP straight down onto Ace. There will be the swap to the side. PPD trying to help out. Ace skewers there. The double doom is out onto both Ace and Fada. Ace will fall. They get the hex down onto Paparazzi, but they just lose three heroes. They lose four heroes getting slaughtered in the base. NIP back to the fountain for them. Beachy Gaming cleaning up this bottom set of racks. 19 minutes in, 13k lead. Going to be more with these structures going down. We'll see sort of how you know how much NIP are going to try and hold in, on in this one. As this game, this is looking to be back to business for Vici Gaming. It's pretty much looking to be over unless NIP can make some sort of miracle comeback. As Vici Gaming, they absolutely steamrolled this game too so far. Yeah, I think you. You can start like thinking more about the next one because this, I mean, they can maybe try to look to push out, but taking fights is impossible. And I mean, you're a Dusa who is completely shut down now. You just have a Manta style. And even with your Manta, they just dove your base and took no damage. So they're going to catch us here with a smoke out. I do get the call onto the PA. They'll Daddy kill him off once. Ori charging straight in, making sure that NIP cannot get on top to kill him a second time. DY does get picked off on the back lines by Fada. Fada continuing to poke, Faye will skewer away. The rest of Vici Gaming backing off, Paparazzi does stick around. He's got the blur to get out though. Well, they at least get themselves one. So a little bit more signs of life coming out, but still looking, yeah. So damn difficult for NIP. As Paparazzi, I think that is the satanic finished up on him. And a near satanic yeah, finished up on Ori, Ori too. Well. So do we even have, does the act, act 33 is gonna have Blade Mill? I mean, after they have their satanics already yeah. finished. I've, I've, dude, I that feel feels like, bad. It's like, so, what, 20 minutes in? When was the last time you saw a game of 20 minutes in when a team had two satanics done on their two cores? Like, that is, that's, that's got to be some you know, just crazy stuff. I know that Mr. Uh, Mr. Dominic would be very happy seeing these uh, satanics built up versus these, this uh, blade mill that, well, it's not even a blade mill just yet, but I know that uh, you know, Black, our, our good buddy, has always been the one who talks about the uh, satanic rushes versus the axe blade mill. Even though we don't see axe too much anymore now, but they have it so early on, like you said, that how do you bring it? It really is, down? yeah. Having it before the blade mill. That's, yeah. You're going to be feeling pretty rough right now if you're 33. I mean, if, you, if you're playing, if you're 33 and you're playing this axe and you click on them and you see satanic, <laughs> you're just like, oh my god. You just, you just, start, I even just start selling the blade mill, you know. But yeah, you see the bottom four net worths. NIP, you see Fade, as we said, that Magnus having an excellent game. Yeah. Just he really start did. to finish with those boots. Just he's the one who really ruined well, he's he, the one who really ruined 33's yeah. game, right? Just running around chasing him all the time with this Magnus and they just have full control. Just the support you know, the, the amount of stuff that DY's been set up as well. Just these Absolutely. two fade and DY just setting out this game to be a nice and smooth one for their cause to play. And of course the Paparazzi Ori and Yang have done everything that they've been given with that space. It's top lane. Beachy Gaming are in position to try and take down that final tier three and set of racks. They will be a little careful. No, a good call can set up. Sold, maybe a stone gaze. He sold his items. He sold out some of the other items to make sure he has the blade mail. He has the blade mail. Let's see what he can do with it. On the side, Pat Pratt, he jumps in sacks and will get the hex off. Double soul bone throwing them into the air. The fingers out to Yang. It barely tickles him. He's fine to continue to just charge in towards the fountain. Dooms down onto Ace. Yeah. There's the GG. This one is all over and done. Game two taken by Vici Gaming with an incredible ferocity as this series now stands one to one. This, it just turned game one entirely on its head. Vici Gaming.